Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I want to show you what happened when I tried to use PETG support interfaces for print using the FlashForge 85X and its IFS, the Intelligent Filament System. You know, one of the biggest benefits of having a multi material system like that is being able to mix and match different types of filament. I've done a couple videos already showing what happens when I used PLA and TPU together, but when it comes to PLA and PETG, they do not like to stick to each other very well, which makes PETG a really good filament for a support interface because it will allow you to remove the supports much easier than if the entire thing was printed with just regular PLA. All right, so I decided to do this with a couple of masks that I printed. And before I show you what happens when I remove the supports, let me take you over to Orca Flash Force to show you how you can set this up. So this is Orca Flash Forge, and I'm gonna show you the settings that I used for this mask here. So ignore the guitar, that's for something in the future. Now, I'm just gonna focus on this Robin mask. So this is what I decided to do. I put the scene position on the bag just so that I could uh, minimize the amount of seam lines that I could see. But as far as the strength tab goes, I changed the infill down to 10% with the cross hatch infill pattern. And then the money of this comes from support. So I enabled the supports, auto tree supports, but when you look down here, filament for supports, you see under support raft support slash raft interface, I changed it to PETG because this is the setup that I have in the IFS for the AD5X. Slot number one is some gray PLA. Slot number two is some high-speed PETG. Got some TPU in slot three, and then some black PLA, high-speed PLA in slot number four. So they're both black, but one is gonna be PETG. All right, so let's just go ahead and preview this because I've already sliced it. And you see that it's going to take 29 filament changes here. And the actual model itself, which is going to be four, it's got a total of 57 grams of filament plus another 0 0.804 for the tower. And the support interface, it's not this entire portion here. It's just the portion that's going to actually connect to the mask. So if I were to, for example, just change the color. Let's just say the color of this PETG was pink instead. And let's just re-slice this and we'll be able to get a closer look at where it comes in. So as you can see here at the very tips, this is where it's going to switch over to PETG and the rest of the supports is just going to be regular PLA. It should make for removal, uh, should make for an easier removal and hopefully a cleaner removal as well. So this is going to take four hours and 14 minutes with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So let's go check on the progress. All right, so this mask just got finished printing. So I'm going to take it off the bed. Now let's see how easy these supports are to remove. Let me flex this plate. All right, so these should be easy to remove. So let's see. Oh, yeah, that's satisfying. Look at that. Yeah, that's, that is smooth to remove. All right, we got, still got a little bit right here. That peels off easily. These ones down at the bottom, you know, just snaps off. Oh no. Oh man, I I snapped off the uh, the part for the for the strap. I was a bit too overzealous. Yep, and the same thing happened on this part as well. Snapped off the part where the strap is supposed to be. So, whoopsie daisy. But the rest of the supports came off easier. Now let me show you a comparison to another mask. <laughs> 
So these two masks are pretty much the same with the exception of this one has smaller eye opening so that you can put like a mesh um, eye in there and this one is just wide open but they were created by the same uh, creator Yosh Studios or Yash Studios um, over on their Patreon and I want to see how clean the support removal is. So this one was just printed with a regular PLA. I brightened it up so that hopefully we can see a little bit better, but the supports were on the inside. So of course it caused uh, some scarring like here and here. It's a little bit sharp. These are things that would need to be sanded down. And then from this side, if you look at it from certain angles, you can kind of see a little bit of the sharpness where it pops up, where it would have to be sanded down. But that is the inside of the mask. Now for the one that had the PETG supports, see that compared to this other one, it's not like completely smooth, but I think that compared to this other one, it looks a little bit cleaner. Yeah, it looks a little bit cleaner as in uh, there's not as much scarring and the scarring does not protrude up as much, but it's definitely not super smooth but those supports came off nice and easy and the supports on this one i did have to use these cutters to help loosen them up a little bit just so i wouldn't accidentally snap them so the ptg support interface works pretty well so one of the things that i have noticed with this printer in the days that i've been testing it is that the default support settings are pretty strong, uh, meaning that when you're just using PLA and you have supports on your model, it can be a little rough trying to take those supports off. I have to use the little cutter tool to just reach up to where the supports grab onto the model and just break it off there as opposed to just snapping the whole thing because I don't wanna break the model. So, so far it seems like those support settings should be tweaked a bit to make the supports easier to remove, but if you use the PETG support interface, it will naturally be a heck of a lot easier to remove those supports. So that's it for now, and I'm gonna to continue to do various tests on the AD5X, and if you want to see more about this printer, I do have a playlist where I'm placing all the videos that I've made about it within that playlist. So you can find that at the end of this video popping up on the screen. If you can't see it there, check out the link in the description because it'll take you to where the playlist is there as well. And as usual, if there's anything that you would like to know, please feel free to leave them down in the comments because I'll be reading those. So that's all for now. Until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.